choir. Thank you. That was an anthem of praise, and I am very, very grateful for it. If you have your Bibles, open them to Matthew chapter 9. That's where we'll end up. All right. We're going to look at a little bit of the same story uh, from Matthew 9, but we're going to look at part of it from Mark chapter 5. But I'm beginning today uh, what will probably take us 10 weeks, unless the Lord changes up and I go longer with this. But uh, right now I'm planning on 10 weeks of talking about what it means to be a God pleaser. I want to be a God pleaser. I want everything that I say and everything that I do put a smile upon his face. I don't care what the world brings me. I don't care what attitude may come. I want to know that I not only do right, but I act right, that I would be honoring to him in all things, just like that song said. He is so very much to us, we need to love and give back to him accordingly. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, in, in verse number 6, it tells us that without faith, that's what it's about, without faith it is impossible can y'all say impossible? Say it. Impossible. impossible to please him. Now flip that and that tells you that you will be a God pleaser if you're a person who lives the life of faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that he is God. You've got to have a belief that there is a God and he is good. Amen. And he is loving and kind and he is there for you. Not only must you believe that there is a God who is, but you must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You need to understand that you, he didn't just start you and, and then he's just going to leave you on your own. No, 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 no. God is there for you. And when you, listen to me now, church, this is where it's going to stand. If you will so put your faith and your trust in him, if every day, all day, any circumstance, every circumstance, you relate to God by faith, no matter what, no matter the outcome, you will please him and you will see the reward of God in your life. Now, if you're looking for God to jump through your, ho your hoops, so to prove himself as God, you're not there yet. But if you can understand that there is a God, and he is, and that he, he is there for those who will come to him, diligently seeking him, he will reward you. He will never leave you. He will never come up short. What a God we serve. Amen? Today we're going to look at a story. Really, we're going to look at three stories. I love these stories. They're, they're put together well, and, and we're going to see them. I'm going to read the scripture to you in, in Matthew 9. We'll pray. And then I'm going to probably, I'm going to really just be a, can I just be a Bible preacher this morning? We're just going to look to what the Word of God says, and we're going to react based upon it. Is that good? Stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Matthew 9, verse number 18. While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her and she will live. So Jesus arose, followed him, and so did his disciples. Suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only, I love this woman, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. The woman was made well from that hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, make room. For the girl is not dead, but sleeping. But they ridiculed him. I've always been amazed at the reaction to the perfect son of God. I understand that they probably didn't understand, but they went straight to ridicule. God help. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand. How gentle our Lord was. And the girl arose, and the report of this went out into all the land. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy.
mercy on us. When he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. And they just they started with obedience, and they ended with disobedience, because it says, When they had departed, they spread the news about him in all the country. I still think that pleased God too, don't you? Let's pray. You are an amazing God. And I thank you, Lord, that we are given the privilege to come to know you, to see you. Lord, uh, though visibly eyes, our eyes have not seen you. Lord, I've never audibly heard your voice. But with every fiber of my being, I believe in you. And I trust in you. And Lord, I know that I need to be moving from faith to faith. So I pray that over the next 10 weeks that you will challenge us, that we will not be so settled in where we are, but in whose we are. And Lord, that you would let us have a fresh vision of you. And Lord, as we, my Father, as we see your Son Jesus, our Savior and Lord, grow us into his likeness. May we have a a faith sighting in our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Three simple stories, but so profound. I've come to know these stories very well. They've meant so very much to me. I've really, I, I, I've written about them a lot. I actually wrote a play that a church did based on this, and I did a little embellishment to it, just a little, and God has always seemed to honor this because it's his word and there's a meaning there, but I just want to simply today want you to view the faith of four people, a man that we will come to know as Jairus, a widow, or excuse me, we don't even know her name. All we know is her ailment and what she did. And two people, once again, we do not know their name, but heaven knows their names. Jesus knew every head on, hair on their head. Now, all of these people God loved. Jairus was a religious man. We are told that uh, he was a member of the, the Jewish leadership. There were the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the Herodians. And he became a, a leader, one of the rulers of the synagogue. That means he was there in the hub of Jerusalem. And there he, he was looked up upon because people had seen something in his life. He had rose through the ranks because there was a God thing in him. Can I say that he was very religious? Yes, very religious. But yet there was something else within him. Because, come on now, religion is not enough. Religion is man's attempt to reach God. Christianity is God reaching down to man. And this was a very religious man. We, we know that, that he had a daughter, and his daughter was sick. So obviously, as a dad, he did what all dads would do. He did what I've done for my daughter when she was sick. I would take her to the doctor. Amen? I mean, let's not shortcut it. These are people who can help people with physical ailments. I, I've never been against doctors. I go see them all the time. More than I want. But I go. And, and you know, men, we don't like to go, but we go. Can I get an amen? amen. Because our wives make us. All right. But also, he probably went to, to, to work. He went to the synagogue and said, hey, guys, my daughter's sick. Matter of fact, she's been sick a while. Would you pray for her? He probably went to, the, to, to buy some vegetables at, on the way home to cook an evening meal. Saw some friends there and said, hey, guys, friends, loved ones, my daughter's sick. 
My daughter's sick. Now, if you come and you ask me to pray for you, I will. I will. And I will lift up a sincere prayer of God's blessing of healing upon whoever it is that you want me to pray about. But can I tell you that there's something, and, and maybe this is wrong, and if it is, I'll confess it to you, but you'll probably say the same thing. When it hits a little closer to home, the anointing or the urgency might get a little stronger. I mean, I'll pray for you, Daryl. I, I, I'll pray for all of y'all. I, I, I'll pray for whatever it may be. But if my daughter's sick, I'm getting on the hotline. If she's come to the point of death, I will move heaven and earth. Now, I'm a control freak. I'm, I'm a recovering control freak. But I'm here to tell you that I'll do everything in my ability to everything that I can. I, I want to leave nothing on the table. But what do you do when life throws you the curveball and you've done everything that you can for the one that you love and it's still not enough? Now, he heard that there was this one named Jesus. I pray that that's what Gainesville is hearing. I pray that's what Hall County is hearing, that there's one named Jesus. There's a lot of people that have a lot of remedies for a lot of things in life. We've all got opinions, and, and we all, uh, uh, can we all say that we're 100% in agreement with our own opinion? <laughs> True or not, we're, we're settled on that. But when something comes up, we're going to move from where we are to where we think we need to be. And this man said, if there's hope, if something is happening in this man's life, if God is using this man in a mighty way, this was a religious man. He, he, they didn't like Jesus, but he kind of put that aside. Come on out, because his daughter was sick. And he left. Take your Bibles and look in Mark. And I know I've already read this to you, and y'all forgive me, but I love the Word of God. And I love how Mark uses this in verse number 20 of Mark 5. And when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, this is why I want you to hear this. He fell at Jesus' feet. And begged him. He's not worried about dignified. I mean, he came with religious clothes on. Everybody knew this. He could have said, uh, I'm a ruler of the synagogue. Send for Jesus and bring him to my house. la ti da No, 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 no. He went to where Jesus was. He fell at his feet. He, my, the New King James says he begged him earnestly. Are y'all good with beg? Do you think his emotions were involved? Do you think there might have been a tear that fell from his face? My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her and she may be healed. And she will live. Now, we'll get to this in a moment, but that's a statement of faith. Did y'all get that? My little daughter lies at the point of death. There's a need. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed. And she will live. Lord, I believe. So Jesus went with him. No arguments. No litmus test. Out of love. Oh, that we have a God that loves. He went with him. A great multitude followed him and thronged him. So he's got all these people going. The disciples are there. People are, people are probably amazed, and, and they're walking down the road together. Now, there's another woman. <clears throat> Let's read Mark's account of this. Verse number 25. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Women, y'all know what I'm talking about? Men, y'all might have a clue, but ladies, do y'all know what I'm talking about? And, and because of this, the Jewish religion called her unclean. She couldn't go to church because she was unclean. Didn't change her heart, though. Look what it says here. Had suffered many things from many physicians. I wonder all the things that the doctors tried. 
probably with good intentions, would y'all agree? Probably everything that they have been taught at the doctor school of the day, the school of medicine. And so good people doing the best that they can, but it wasn't enough. She suffered because of it. It says she had spent all that she had, all that she had, all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. This is getting serious. When she heard, once again, somebody's talking. I pray that in Gainesville, somebody's talking. I'm praying that in, some, in, in our lives, uh, we can talk about the weather. We can talk about the Braves. We can talk about the Georgia Bulldogs. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. We, we can talk about any of those things whatsoever. We can talk about work. We can talk about gardening. We can talk about how much pollen uh, is on our cars and how many times we sneeze. But, but I praise God and I hope that there's some talk about something that really matters. I pray that there's some boldness in the lives of God's people who are so in love with him that they can't help but brag on the one that they love so much. Because maybe if we keep bragging and maybe if we keep talking, those that are in need will know where they need to turn. Maybe when they have ran out of hope, somebody will shine a light of hope. And you don't know where. It may be in the doctor's office. How many of y'all are good for healing in the doctor's office? It may be in a church service. Well, they wouldn't have met her there. You see, she heard somewhere out there. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garments. I, I, can y'all picture this woman? She's probably as, as skinny as a pencil. She's been sick for 12 years. She's anemic. All the blood's flowed out. She's probably got an ashen look to her face. If you are low in blood, you're going to be tired. You wake up tired. You walk the day tired. You go to bed tired. You get back up tired. Can, can, I, can you hear me? And, and, and she, has no, she has nothing, but she's heard, and there's this crowd around him, and, and she knows she doesn't have standing. I wonder if she even crawled. But in her heart, she said, listen to this. She said, if, verse, verse 28, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. If I can just get the hem of his garment, it, the, the tassels. I don't know that Jesus had that. If I can just, just a touch will do it. Maybe she lunged. But when she touched him, <laughs> verse 29, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. When God heals, he heals to the uttermost and he heals immediately. Y'all good with that? And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. She went from despair and hope to healing. And by the way, I don't care what you're facing in life. I don't care what the, di the, the dilemma may be. You can go from desperation to hope to healing. You can find your healing there. Well, that... Amen, all is good, right? Verse 30, though. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him. Not only did she get a joke, he got a joke. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Not that he's going to get on to her at all. Because you see, look, if God's up to something, I want to be in it. If God's up to something, I want to hear about it. How many of y'all love to hear testimonies? One of the things that we do not do enough, and I pray that we'll do more of in the days that are ahead, is that we can share the testimonies of how we came to know Christ. I think there's, I know that there's power in sharing our testimonies. Matter of fact, if you get more comfortable with it, you'll share it anywhere. I mean, just use it at one of the arrows in your quiver. I think that you need to do that. 
He wants to know what's been going on. Who touched my clothes? Verse 31. His disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? They're really saying, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's, we're bouncing. I mean, there's a crowd. We're moving through. Everybody's reaching out. It's not like, you, you've seen how athletes will go through today and people want a, an autograph and they're just reaching out for them and all that kind of stuff. There's all, he, looked, he's, he said, what do you mean who touched me? Verse 32. He looked around to see her who had done this thing. I wonder what it was like when their eyes met. But the woman, fearing and trembling, we'll talk about that more in a second, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. All I can tell you is she told the story and I can just see the smile on his face. She had become a God pleaser. Daughter, hold on. Your faith has made you well. You came in desperation. You came weak and anemic. You came just empty as empty could be. But he said, go in peace and be healed of your affliction. That's an amen moment. And at that point, verse 35, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house and said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? When those words hit Jairus' ears, his heart hit his feet. As long as he was, as she was alive, there was hope. But can I just say, no matter the dilemma, as long as there's Jesus, there's hope. I don't care what limitations you put on it. Your limitations don't match my God. As a matter of fact, the greatest thing that the church needs to do today is we need to let God be God. And I'm just going to say this, some of your God is too small. But that's a, not a true representation. Because you see, I serve a great big God. Amen? And, and I, don't ha I, I, I serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. He is God. My finite mind might not be able to understand it, but by faith I can reach the one who does. By faith, daughter, you've been healed. Jairus, you've just heard the worst news that you could hear. But then you look what he said. Verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. You just think, you just thought that you lost hope. Uh-uh. <laughs> Chill out. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Just believe. He permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Verse 38, he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, saw a turmoil, and those who wept and wailed loudly. I mean, there were times that, that the, the, the community would come around and, and they would support and they would pray. And, and, and if, if you didn't have it, listen, this might sound silly to you, but you could actually hire mourners. Brother Mark, they bring the musical instruments over. You got to set the mood, you know. Can you hear it? Can you hear the cries? Where's this man's heart? Jesus just said, don't be afraid, only believe. But he walks up to his house now, and, and, and he sees all the people, and he hears the crying and the wailing. I wonder what it was like when he, he, he matched eyes with his wife. She hadn't heard all about this. She was still in despair. She was still broken. And I guarantee you with my wife, there would be many tears. And my heart, because I love her so very much, my heart would be broken. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. <laughs> they thought, you're an idiot. They ridiculed him. But I love the second part of verse 40 there. But when he had put them all outside, we don't have room for unbelief. You need to get that gone. 
Church, listen to me. I'm not going to chase a rabbit, but listen to me. When you're seeking to live a life of faith, there will be people that will come around you. Be careful who you speak your faith words to because they will, their reactions will make you lose your faith. Do not lower yourself down to their unbelief. I, I don't know that you heard that, but you're going to be reminded of that by the Holy Spirit. Be very careful when you leave this building today, if you so seek to say, from now on I'm going to be a God pleaser and, and I'm going to believe and I'm going to trust and by faith I'm going, to put, I'm going to have a great big God. Understand that there will be people out there that will try to bring you down to their level of belief. And he says, we got to get this out of the way. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. He took by the child by the hand and said, Talakamai, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Hey, little girl, now this is God speaking. Arise. Do any of you ever find it unique that God speaks to the ones who cannot and speaks life to the cannot. He asks us to do what we cannot on our own, but we can with his word. Faith is acting upon the word of God. Faith is not just you dreaming it up and saying, I believe, so all this is going to happen. That is not faith. That is not faith. Faith is acting on the word of God. When God said to that little girl, arise, <laughs> it was settled at that moment. And she, life came back to her. When Jesus stood at the grave of a man who had been dead, Lazarus, come forth. The Holy Spirit takes the words of God and makes it come alive. I can just, can y'all see that? Here you see. I mean, they wrapped a man up. <laughs> Loose him and let him go. It doesn't matter what you bind on. When God speaks, it is bound no more. I wonder what the crowd outside the house thought when mom came down shouting. Y'all hear me? Probably a 12-year-old girl probably had her in her arms. Dad had that chest out, tears flowing down his face. And those that ridiculed him before were saying in their heart, wow. By the way, that's a biblical word. If you run across it in the Old Testament, it's called Selah. It means wow. What do you think about that? That's exactly what they're doing. Jesus left that place. Go back to Matthew's account. I promise you I'll be done, done preaching by the time I start tonight. <laughs> when Jesus departed, verse 27, two blind men followed him crying out and saying, followed him. Two blind men followed him. That means they're walking. Two blind men, Andy. Now, I'm not in any way, shape, form, or fashion trying to be disrespectful. They were following the voice of God. <laughs> and you don't have to see to follow the voice of God. If you think that's a, an irony, amen, amen, and amen. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Can I say, yet? They're out there following him, people are, and they're crying out. They're crying out saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. People are looking at them and saying, Hold on, what are you doing? What are you doing? And they're shouting it out. And, and, and what they're making is a messianic promise or a, a praise. They're saying, Son of David, I think you're the one that the Scripture says is the Son of God. I think that this is the promised one who's coming. 
And I'm coming to this one that, is, that has been sent by God because I am in need. Have mercy on us. And everyone in this room does not need justice. Everyone in this room needs mercy. Don't give me what I deserve. Lord, give me your best. And in verse 28, it says, and when he had come into the house. Now, I, I don't know that you're going to listen to me for the next 30 seconds, but I pray that you do. Jesus was not being rude by keeping on walking away and going into a house. There are times that you're praying out to God and you're expecting God just to do, jump through hoops and bounds to get to right where you're at and you're mad if he doesn't do what you say, when you say, where you are. But there are times that God has delayed. There are times that, that you've got to continue to go on to get where he's at. But he's just kind of wanting to know, how much do you want this? Are y'all good with that? So he's in the house, but that's not a detraction, the distraction. It's not, they're, they're going anyway. When he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. Praise God. And Jesus said to them, hear this phrase, do you believe that I'm able to do this? He knew what they wanted. New Holland, do you believe? Well, we talked about this last Sunday. There's a lot of people who say they believe. By your actions, are you showing that you believe? Because faith without works is dead. But he looks at these two people who are acting upon it, the hope that is there. And they're kind of, he just says, let's just clarify this up front. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And I'm going to ask you this right now. Do you believe that Christ is able? Do you believe that? They said to him, yes, Lord. He touched their eyes, saying, you're not going to hear anything more important than the next phrase. This is the end of verse 29. According to your faith, let it be to you. According. Now, by the way, this is not my words. Y'all good with that? This is not my opinion. And there are great things in God's words that when he says it, some people like to try to make it complicated. Please do not make this more complicated than what it is. It is a statement according to your faith. In the same measure of your faith, in the same way that you see and are ready to act upon it. Because faith is acting upon the Word of God. So in the way that you see, that you believe, and you're going to act upon it, according to this formula, according to your faith, let it be. I am releasing the Holy Spirit to do amazing things in your life according to your faith. Preacher sounds like he's getting Pentecostal. Man, they're not close to me. I got a great big God. You think, I, I, I talked to a guy uh, a couple weeks ago, and he came, and in the first three minutes of his talking to me, he said, I have healing in my hands. And I looked at him and said, I got healing in my Lord. And the difference between, between us was he saw what he could do and he was amazed by what he could do and I've seen what Christ can do and I'm amazed by what Christ can do. But here's the thing. Rick, God says I can do this in you. God has so much that he wants to do. God is not a miser in heaven saying, I'm only going to give you so much. No! No! The Word of God says that his eyes are looking to and fro throughout all the earth, seeking ones who will trust and believe in him. In this room today, he wants to know. God wants to know. Where is your, where's the faith checkup? Where is your faith? How much do you believe him? How much is of it is it real to you? How much of it are you willing to act? What he is saying is, according to that, I'm willing to move. 
Not on your word, but on his word. Not on your will, but on his will. Not in your power, but in his power. I'm not hedging my bet. I'm saying that's how God works. Verse 30, their eyes were open. Here are three quick things, and I'm going to say amen. Number one, fear is the enemy of faith. Jairus did not care what others said, but he still went trembling. The woman, when Jesus said, who touched me, said, was full of fear and trembling. These men, they knew that they were having, they were out there. But there was something that was greater that pushed them forward. And they were willing to go on, even though they didn't have all the things worked out yet, yet they believed. There's a man in Mark 9 who had a child that he brought to Jesus. And, and, and he, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, some of the chief priests were there. They couldn't help. The disciples who had actually healed in the past, they couldn't help. Jesus came down out of the, off the Mount of Transfiguration and sees this fight going on and he starts talking to him and the dad steps up and he, he starts talking and ministering to the dad and, and the dad says, if, if you can do anything, Jesus just stopped right there and said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. That's Mark 9, 23. All things are possible. Come on now. Can y'all say all things? All things? All things are possible to him who believes. According to your faith, let it be done to you. James chapter 4 says, You have not because you ask not. I wonder what your prayers are like and what they're about. If I came to you with a prayer request, you may say, Yes, I'll pray about that. Lord, you understand that. You know that. Bless. And I appreciate that. But did you really believe? Isn't it funny how God will put us in circumstances that we don't like, but in those circumstances we'll move from where we are to where we need to be? My, by the way, that guy... In Mark chapter 9, when Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes, you know what he said back? <laughs> Lord, I believe. And then you know what he said? Help my unbelief. Lord, as much as I, I can, as much as where I am, you know where I am, you know where I've been, and, and, but, but as best I can, I, I'm pushing all my chips in. I, I'm putting all my hope in. I believe, but Lord, I've never been this way before. Help my unbelief. Jesus didn't get on to him. Jesus understood that he was being honest and humble and said, amen. He'll take you where you are. and He can take you all the place that you need to be according to your faith. I believe that's what he's saying this morning. According to your faith, let it be done to you. His bow. Close your Bibles, turn off your phones. Give me just a moment. According to your faith. I don't know what you're facing in life. I don't know what is pressing upon your heart. Some of you may be very strained in your relationship with God. Maybe some of you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Maybe there's some things in your life, some acts of obedience that God's been, maybe you've never been baptized. Maybe, maybe there's some things, that, some people that you need to talk to. Maybe there's some things in your life. I don't know what they are. Maybe there's some financial burdens out there. Maybe there's some broken homes that are out there. And you stand in need of a God who can do. And I can tell you, my God can. So my question to you is, do you believe? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? That's what Jesus is saying. 
feebly. And whatever he's asking you to do right now, are you willing to have faith and act upon it? Are you willing to put it into his hands finally and say, yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you have me to do. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, that's where it all begins. If you're a believer that's not been baptized, baptism is the first step of obedience. You need to do that. If there's some dilemmas in your life, if there's some troubles in your family, if there's some issues, God can. It's not a bother to Him. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above. But He's waiting on you. According to your faith, let it be done. My Lord, my God, my Savior, my Master, my King, and my friend, you have been so good to me. You are, a, you are a great God, high and mighty and lifted up. You are holy, you are different, but yet you love us right where we are. You take our honesty of where we are, and Lord, we're all in deficit, but we come to you with a God who has abundance. And I pray all over this room, I pray obedience over this room. Lord, may we be obedient unto you. May life begin today as we move out of our unbelief and trust you to be God and a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. May we please you today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.